So what we know um, and what, what these companies should have known for decades is that there's an increased risk associated with NEC with premature infants who are fed a cow's milk formula. So, so it's kind of, it's important to put it in subsets. We are not saying all formula is dangerous. We are saying premature infants cannot properly digest cow's milk formulas, so bovine-based formulas. And as a result, they are at an increased risk of developing NEC. And it's like a, it's anywhere between five to 10 times increased risk. It's significant. And so in the early 2000s, you had companies recognize this, that we have a, an infant population, the most vulnerable infant population of premature infants who cannot digest this food. So what do we do? We make a safer design for them. And, and what that is, is a human milk-based formula. And so there is there has been safer alternatives out there for the last two decades, essentially. And, and all it is, is replacing the bovine milk with the human milk. But of course, you know, when we're talking about corporations, and, and I am jaded, I apologize uh, just from working in this industry, the, de the decision is not okay, what is safer? It is what is more cost effective. And of course, you're going to see the defense come out with the arguments that, that human milk only formulas are, are not cost effective. But if you take a, you know, our, our response to that is if you take a look at it in, in the grand scheme of thing, things is, is children who are diagnosed with neck have hundreds of thousands of, of medical bills that they have to pay. So in the grand scheme, it is actually a safer and cheaper alternative than, than being diagnosed with neck. Right. And what's that just because I have no idea and formula is crazy expensive as it is. What, what is the human milk? Forget how it's made, but what is the human formula um, price comparison um, when you look at human versus bovine? I actually can't give you the exact number right now. It, it's probably a few times higher than a yeah. formula based, but, but here's kind of where the shift happens. It's not like the, the mothers are, are paying this out of pocket in the NICU. There's actually a marketing scheme and strategy that's set up by these formula companies where they give hospitals formula for free. And that mm -hmm. kind of ties into that addiction model that I was talking about. So they give NICU nurses and, and doctors free formula so that they can create brown, brand loyalty in the NICU. So that when the mother finally is able to, to take that child out of the NICU, they say, oh, well, he was fed Similac. So I'm not going to change his feeding pattern after that right. traumatic event. And it right. creates brand loyalty for the first child, the second child, the third child. And that's really why they start with that free product in the hospitals because they want to create that model down the road. So in speaking of cost, it, it's, it's, you can't really compare it because of that kind of scheme sure. that these guys have in place. It makes sense. And, you know, we see that with, you know, hospitals, doctor's offices. I've been thinking of, you know, being sent home with a, a particular kind of diaper, you know, that sort of thing. And, and it makes sense if it, if it works, then, you know, let's continue to use it. Um, but, but certainly a lot uh, that will come out when all of the documentation is, um, you know, is shared and, and you're able to rifle through it. Yeah. Um, and listen, just to put that into perspective, sorry, no, this idea of, of free formula being given to hospitals is totally isolated to the United States. So in the, in the 1980s, you had, um, uh, the, the World Health Organization come out and say, we've got this major problem. We see that the formula companies are creating addiction models. So what we're going to do to stop that is we're going to create a worldwide code that polices and regulates the formula companies. But in order to follow that code, your country has to buy into it, right? They have to vote to agree that we're going to follow this breastfeeding code. As part of that, that code, what it says is if you are a formula company, you cannot advertise your product, cannot advertise. You cannot give free samples. So out of all the countries in the world, guess who was the one who did not vote to follow that code? The United States, right? Because that is their entire business model. And I feel like that story, that narrative just speaks to what, what the bones of this case look like. It, it is really just a story of greed and power and control. 